Welcome back lovely friends and thank you for stopping by if this is your first time here. My name is Sylvie and I love sharing journaling systems. Today's episode is about the method I apply in note taking. So let's get started with the definition of note taking. Note taking is the practice of recording the essence of the information that comes from different sources of knowledge. And it's important to remember that this is about taking uh, key points or the key uh, focal points that represent that topic and not every single tiny detail about it. So I've done a brief uh, historical uh, research about this methodology because usually that gives me uh, a clue about the benefits of using it. And um, I realized the ancient Greeks uh, developed that concept of epomnima and that was later translated into English as notes or notebook. And of course this is something we are all interested in and we use frequently. I also um, saw that Plato was encouraging his students in the academy to learn through their own personal writings and he referred to this as anamnesis, which means memories, because he believed that this eventually will build a collection of notes and it will be considered as a device of um, artificial memory. And that kind of gave me the hint about the benefits, because if you build a notebook full of notes and that can help you as your secondary memory, um, that means you are freeing your mind from the burden that you personally have to recall every, everything you learn in life. It will also help you to uh, practice engaged learning. For example, I attended a few months ago a free online lecture about art and I had my notebook ready. I took some notes here and there. Later on, I added some stickers, but this helped me to implant and comprehend the material and the time also passed very quickly. So all of those benefits are of note taking. That's why I encourage you to start uh, practicing that skill. It does not require a special gift or talent and it will help you to build your artificial memory. Now moving on uh, to the topic of what do I take notes about? Many people struggle to know from where to start and the brief answer is you need to take notes about the important subjects. Okay, so how we define important subjects? One way to do this is you can ask yourself one of those two questions. The first one, why you're interested in that topic and how can you apply it in life? So for example, um, I love art and it brings me a mental satisfaction and it makes me happy. That's a good reason enough to classify it as an important subject, even though I'm not a professional painter myself. But that's fine. I love art and I like taking notes about it. The second question is how you can apply it. If it's a recipe, if it's something related to your productivity or anything in life that you feel you want to start experiencing or... Um, trying it in your life, that means that it's a good reason and it's classified as an important subject for you. But if you cannot find any answer uh, for those two questions, then you probably don't want to invest your energy in this topic and you want to move on to another topic of interest. Now, regarding the systems I apply in note taking. The first way, I call it the uh, Sylvie's formula method. And the reason I called it this way is because I didn't see anyone doing it exactly the same way I'm doing it. Um, so it's basically a way that I structure my sentence or my note like a formula. So I put the aimed result in the beginning and I put equal and then I add keywords as the main component uh, of that topic and the, all the keywords are interconnected with arrows. And in this way, it's like I have a book of um, recipes, if you want to say. I have a group of notes uh, that tells me exactly how can I compose or cook that particular uh, aimed result. How can I achieve it? Or what is it made of? And of course, you can apply this to different topics, whether in life, time management, uh, scientific topic, and so on. So this is how I put them together and then preferably I have to put them in an organized form which brings us to method number two. You need some form of a structured outline to your notes 
um, leave space between each, uh, try to sort them alphabetically or numerically. This way, when you go back to your notes, you don't see this lengthy condensed paragraph. You want to see um, just the recipe of each item. And the third method is more related to the visual representation of your information. And uh, basically like maps and diagrams and charts. I occasionally use this method, maybe not more than 10%. Um, however, when I see the example I'm working on fit better to be represented in a form of diagram, I go ahead and I apply this. And of course, when it comes to mapping and mind mapping, this is there is multiple techniques out there. Maybe we can do this in part two video. But for now, I will share with you one example of the diagram. So let's say, for example, we are trying to um, compare between the performance of students uh, who took handwritten notes um, versus the students who typed their notes. And of course, both are correct. But let's say I'm from the team that I'm building my argument in defense of handwritten notes. And I built that diagram. Uh, the concept of the diagram is to put the ultimate goal as a central focal point in the middle. And then you branch out different avenues that in theory should lead to that ultimate goal. So if the ultimate goal is um, building a memory storage in your notebook, and you can see that this um, is related to information management. So what happens when you take notes is that your brain goes through information management, you acquire the information, you filter it, and then you go through the mental process of connecting this to existing knowledge and comprehend it. And then you go through the phase of rephrasing it and writing notes writing down some notes and all of that self-knowledge workflow leads to the memory storage notebook and the studies uh, in many cases proved that the students with handwritten notes have performed better on examinations uh, compared to the one that typing word for word transcription because with the handwritten notes you allowed your brain to go in few seconds maybe maximum few minutes through this deeper processing of learned material and you also went through selective rephrasing because uh, you don't write it word by word so for you to rephrase your notes in your own words you forced your brain to go through that very interesting topic or process and that was one example of using diagrams now, the last thing I want to share is a few tips about how you build your notes. First of all, your page layout. I did share my page layout in the Common Place book video, and the most important for me is to have a margin and a space for notes. Uh, however, some people like to um, lay out their page using the Cornell method, which basically is the same uh, and just adding um, section as a footnote for summary. Now, if you're like me, I don't like to repeat the information in my notebook, so I don't add a summary. I see it's more like a repetition, but you still can have a summary section, um, maybe for additional information or maybe some uh, doodling or drawing your idea. But for sure, I will have my margin, my title, my header, and the main space for notes. The second tip, please don't read this like art journal. Uh, if you see any stickers here, that's because after I finished, I found some spaces and I added some highlights, but this is not an art journal. The more you worry about creating a beautifully artistic page, this will be an obstacle for you to build an efficient uh, memory storage uh, notebook. Uh, so if you noticed, I use only one color pen and I just use it for pure knowledge information. And finally, I uh, also want to give you another tip, which is using the method of stenographia, narrow writing, and basically using abbreviations. Um, maybe in another video we can share universal abbreviations or your own, but the abbreviations are key because if you are taking your notes real time, like you're taking your notes same time you're listening to the lecture in the class or maybe same time you're reading your book, 
then you want to be as efficient and as quick as possible and abbreviations will help you to do that so that was a brief summary i hope i didn't take too long about the note taking system uh, note taking system um, played a important part in human history, in scientific development, and in general, in self-knowledge uh, discipline. So let's open this for discussion. Please share with me your questions, share with me your methods of note-taking, and I would love to um, discuss this with you so we can all inspire each other to refine our methods. Thank you for your time and happy journaling.